Welcome everybody, Steve here. Today we are working on this 16 inch variable delta scroll saw. Now this one here is a 40-540C. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. Now if you have one of these, they're a great, great machine. I have kept these things going forever and ever. Now the only problem with these uh, old deltas, it's hard to find parts, but if you can find them, you can keep this thing going forever. Now I'm just going to go through a couple things that are a little troublesome on these, and I'm going to show you how to fix them. Okay, one of the first things, when you, uh, when you're just getting wore out, this arm right here, you can start to do this. And if that happens, we got to get in here and we got to repair it. So let's do that first. We'll, uh, we'll confirm that it even runs. I got a bunch of these uh, uh, just the other day. So now I'm just making sure I can get them running. And then I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Okay, let me get an extension cord. Now I haven't got a blade in here, so it's going to make a little bit of rocking. Do I have my uh, power on here? All right, we got better power now. Okay, this one doesn't turn on. means that switch is maybe a little bit sticky. Okay, confirm that it's working. The variable speed works. So this machine is worth repairing. here, as you can see it's got the, the quick release for the, uh, for the blade. Now if yours doesn't have that, uh, sometimes the jaws will, uh, you know, they get a little bit weak and these work really nice but they also wear out as well and sometimes if you flip this too fast and too hard it'll come apart and you'll lose your springs so make sure that you're Really, really careful with that. So, the big thing with this one and these machines is right in here. So let's take this apart and show you how we repair that. We just got these uh, four screws here. And that pops out. Now, what ends up uh, doing here is this bar right here. As you can see, it moves. So this bar is wore out. Not good. And I can see here that there's a little little bellows right here. And when this goes up and down that pumps air out over here. When it's this old there's no repairing that. I don't think I can get a part for that at all. Which is unfortunate. So there's two screws in here. One there, one there. And it's a special bolt. I'm going to show you what that looks like when we get her apart. So we can zoom in and button even more. Just a flat bladed uh, screwdriver. Now these are usually pretty tight. Now 
you can see here that this is a bolt with a uh, fairly deep collar on it basically that this bar right here rides right on top and you can see that there's a groove worn right in here now on yours if you can't find these you might be able to switch them out and if the threads start in a different position you might get lucky and then this piece will this side will ride on I'm not too sure what side would be wearing you'd have to figure that out you'd have to just make a little mark let's just do that let's see which side everything wears on it's either the bottom or the top okay I'm gonna just put a mark on the top here where it's war tighten it back in and see what it uh, where it wears right on the very top And you can do that. Just put a little mark on here, and it, if it's different than this side, you know, because the threads start different, you might get away with just using the same screw. Special bolt, they call that. Yeah, this one's completely wore out here as well. So this one, you can see that it's uh, wore out on the bottom on that one. This is nothing more than just a piece of, I don't know if it's a hardened steel or just a regular soft steel, but in a pinch, you could just take a chunk of three quarter um, I think that's about uh, 5 eighths wide, but you could probably build one if you have to. If you can't find a part somewhere, fortunate enough for me, I've got some parts because I've been fixing these things for, for 25, 30 years now. So, it's not that big of an issue. Now, of course, we've got some pivot points here, and we've got to make sure that we lube those up really, really well. And same with this guy. Just get in and spray in that little hole around the sides over there. You gotta make sure she's good and lubed. Alright, gonna get some air and we'll blow this up. So we can, I'm just gonna leave this hose, even though it doesn't work. You know, someday if I ever come, come across a bellows, a guy can, uh, you know, change that out. If I find somebody that's got some parts somewhere. But right now, I just want to lube that up. Right away, any lubrication that's, uh, or any grease that's in there, it's going to loosen up as soon as you put on the penetrating oil. Now one thing I can do is this, this penetrating oil here, it's a WD and it's got a gel lubricant. You know it's one of those Come with the three pack. Never used it before. Let's see if we can get a little bit in there. The ball's still getting in my camera. So, this is this machine here. If you're working on yours, 
They're all fairly similar. They all basically move in the same kind of way. You want to make sure that all of your uh, pivot points are all well lubricated and moving well. Yeah, that one's really, really good. Perfect. Okay, now we can install our new arm here. Link. Now what I'm going to do is I'm not a big fan, this is pretty protected in here. Not a big fan of putting uh, too much lubricant on any of this woodwork and stuff because the dust just collects. I'm going to make sure I got you going. There we do. I'm just going to put a little, little bit of grease on here. You know, if it buys you a few more months, it's worth it. There. It is that simple. And that is your main link on these and that's the weakest point on this whole machine. Other than that, this machine should last forever. So now we can just put our cover back on. Just snug, you don't want to break this, just plastic. Now this, now this link here, if you have one of these and you can't find the parts, you know, in a pinch, and I wouldn't hesitate at all, you know, you could, you could just kind of protect these uh, threads here, and I would weld that up, and just kind of resurface it. You can weld these up as well, and redrill them. You know, most parts can be fixed. So if that's an issue, then and you're in a pinch, you can still do that. All right. I'm gonna put a blade in this, and uh, we're gonna see how she sounds. Now, the bottom one on these. It's not a quick release, so I still have to use my wrench here. And basically it's just a, uh, a little bar right here with an Allen key. And uh, this one's in really nice shape. You just slip it through the hole and then just tighten up your blade. I got some blades around here. Gonna search those out, be right back. Quite the zoom job I got going on there. All right, these are some fairly thin blades I got here, but they will do. I'm not really a big fan of uh, real thin blades on a 
on a scroll saw. I kind of like the uh, about one eighth. My goodness, you know, I don't know what you're gonna cut with that, but that's pretty darn thin. Okay, remember the teeth gotta go down. Really hard to see what's going on with this. Hope my fingers aren't in the way. Let me just see if I can hold it in there. And then just tighten her up. Okay. Now if you want this to uh, well, let's go to the top here. Okay, the bottom is locked into place. Now, this is your lever here for your tension on this machine. You want to make sure that it is in the down position. And then we can go ahead and put this blade in here. Now, this should be fairly snug. But if it's not, of course, you just loosen that. If it's too tight, tighten it. If it's too loose, and now it's, you can see it's a little floppy. And then we just tension it up. Now, I need a little bit more tension on there. So all we do is screw this down just a hair. There we got a higher pitch. Was that a C note? And just like that, you got your blade in. Now this is a very thin blade, like I said, like a little thicker, but it'll do. Let's go plug her in, let's see how she sounds. Nice and smooth. Alright, I've got a little chunk of black walnut here. That's a really nice cut. Now, some truists don't usually use this guard, but if you are gonna use it, you just want it just to keep it from bouncing. You don't want it too tight because it'll start to, um, what'll end up happening is it'll uh, start binding and then you gotta push, and as soon as there's effort, then you can cause some issues. I can see that this guard here, not the guard, but the hold down, is a little crooked. So just a screw on the back and we'll straighten that out. So if your switch goes, this one's good. I'm just going to show you how to take it out. Now, of course, you're not going to be able to buy one of these from Delta, but you can buy this switch all day long at uh, your automotive or electronics store. And same with this variable speed here. It doesn't usually ever go. Those things last for a long, long time. Now the switch itself, you can see it's two wires. That's it. And these little uh, pieces right here, you just squeeze those and that whole switch just pops right out of this uh, holder here. 
Just pop those out, bang, bang, put a new one in. Just wanted to show you guys that so that you don't feel so intimidated if you have to jump in there and get that done. I have uh, replaced a couple switches on these, but uh, pretty rare. So today we got away with a fairly simple fix on these, but like I said, really not too much goes wrong with these. They're a great little machine and you know every once in a while if you really abuse them you know you can uh, um, you know break apart here or there but yeah for the home person the DIY guy this thing will last for a long long time if you've got one. Now there's other ones out there that are that are as good and the technology on these is getting pretty good they're lasting a long time so don't be afraid to pick up an old one of these or even a brand new one not this particular one but there are a couple out there I don't really want to name any names you know that's just not too fair but this little Delta line here has been a rock star for us we've had them in the schools for over 30 years and I can keep this one here is probably 25 years old and I just keep it going just change the odd little part here and there and they go forever so if you have one of these good on you there's the weak point and if yours is starting to rattle a little bit make a little noise that is why because that link is starting to wear out so that's what you need to change so thanks for watching till next time stay tuned Alright, we got some bonus footage here. So I'm working on another one and it's missing all its components here. So what we need is we need a handle that slips in here. First thing you want to do is loosen the screw off so you got a little bit of room to work. And it slips in there like that. Okay. But these two little grooves right there that's for this little spring here and it basically you just want to hook it on and then you pull it and snap it into place first of all we have to install this little spring which goes on the back side I'll give you a little zoom in over on the other side here Okay, now I told you to put those little clips on the other side. Eh, wrong. Put this spring in first. Okay, we gotta get the handle in. Okay, spring goes in there. And then this little guy, you know, there's a little slot right there. This basically. You gotta hold your mouth just right and then you just push it into place until it clicks into the other side there. So now there's a little, this is spring loaded now, right there. And if you got a fairly good spring in there, that should not ever come loose, but sometimes they do. I'm going to loosen this off a little bit. Now we can readjust it for this blade. Just like that. Got some tension on it. Looks good. Now on this particular one right here, you can see that the end is broke off. I wonder if you can see that. Yeah, you can. Let's just bring it over here.
Now, they break off because when the blade breaks, you know, this thing is just a flopping all over the place. But it shouldn't really impede too much on the performance of your machine. Everything will still work. So don't worry if that little chunk's broke off. It would be nice to give it a little bit more strength, but for the most part, it'll still run. These things go forever. All right, let's turn this one on and see what she sounds like now. Now I haven't changed the linkage on this one, so it should sound a little bit rougher. It's not too bad. That's my table rattling. That's a good little machine. Okay, this uh, this bed looks pretty rough. So I'm going to show you what I do to clean them up. Now this one here looks like it's got some varnish or something spilt on there. Let's see if some mineral spirits will take it off. Hmm. It does come off, but it's taking a little bit of time here. Boy, that must be old. Okay, we're going to go to another step here. Something a little easier, a little funner. But what you can do is, if yours is in pretty darn good shape, doesn't have a bunch of paint and stuff all over it, could scrape that off with a razor blade, of course. You can just give this a light sand with a 400 grit or something. And if you're using them a lot, and you're really serious about your stuff, give that a little wax. Your uh, wood will move a lot freer through that. Okay, I'm gonna put this lacquer thinner away and we'll be right back. Okay, this one, this, this deck here is a little bit rough. It's got a little bit of rust. We've got some varnish, some staining. So what I'll do is I'll just use one of these fiber pads on my grinder. Now these come in different grits. I like the uh, purple ones, they're a little bit more aggressive. And use these a lot for automotive. And if you saw my uh, table saw video, um, I use this one here to do the top of the table saw, a beautiful job. And <clears throat> you kind of see we got a swirl going this way. So I kind of want to just kind of keep going with the theme here. I don't want to kind of go across. So let's see what happens. That actually works the best if a guy just goes in here like that. I think that looks really, really good. I just use a little bit of paste wax. I don't, uh, I don't particularly like all those fancy sprays. There, done deal. Ready for action.